Hi, welcome to Semantics Lecture Lit on Ambiguity. We're going to explore the nature of ambiguity and describe a little about how we can disambiguate ambiguous expressions, diagnosing them and repairing them in that sense. So when we say ambiguous, uh, the term uh, can mean a number of things, but we're going to use it to mean uh, the property of linguistic expressions by which they can be interpreted in more than one way. And it's important to point out that ambiguity is a property of linguistic expressions. It's not a property of semantic meanings. So when we talk about ambiguity, there's a lot of different kinds, right? There's lexical ambiguity, structural ambiguity, contextual ambiguity, scope ambiguity. And we'll talk about many of those in this course because, as we'll see, ambiguity is all over natural language. And so here we're just kind of uh, discuss what we mean by ambiguity, and then throughout the course, when it becomes relevant, we'll look at very particular types of ambiguity. So, for example, um, the classic case of lexical ambiguity is when you have a, a lexical item that can be mapped in multiple ways. So, for instance, there's a mole on my back. That The word mole is lexically ambiguous between the spot that appears on one's skin and uh, a small mammal that burrows in the ground. And depending on which word you have here, you get wildly different sentences, right? wildly different propositions. And these will have different meanings. And we, when we say they have different meanings, of course, meaning is truth conditional. So what we're really saying is that they have different truth conditions. So if I say there's a mole on my back, talking about the spot, then that's going to have certain truth conditions, right? Maybe there's a spot on my back. If I say there's a mole on my back talking about the, the animal, that's going to be a different set of truth conditions. And one of these, you know, and one of these can be true, one of these could be false, right? Or at least not true. So if there's a spot on my back but no animal, and I say there's a mole on my back, one of these expressions is true and one of them is false. And that alternate truth and falsehood can, it is, a, is a clear sign that we have an ambiguous expression. Right? So this, for the same context, I'm just sitting around in a chair and there's a spot on my back, on my skin, I can say there's a mole on my back. And under one sense it's true, under one sense it's false, right? The animal sense, there's nothing on my back. Now, there can also be instances where it, the, the truth conditions um, don't necessarily disambiguate, but the context does. So if I have a spot on my back, a mole, and there's also the animal on my back, um, and I'm running around screaming, there's a mole on my back, then both of those are true, but only one of them is relevant to the situation. You know, I don't really need you to get the spot off my back, I need you to get that mammal off my back. It's trying to burrow into me. Um, if I go to the doctor, however, and I can say there's a mole on my back, could you look at it? Uh, it's probably going to be the spot. Now, another element of ambiguity involves lexical ambiguity, but there might also be a sense where it's not quite lexical. And um, it skirts the line between ambiguity and vagueness. We'll get to that. So if I say I wore a light coat, that could mean that it's light in color, or it could mean that it's light in weight, right? So if it's light in color, it's not dark. If it's light in weight, it's not heavy. And thinking about these antonyms helps us disambiguate them. And we can use these antonyms in follow-ups as well. So if I say I wore a light coat, but it was heavy, then but it was heavy is not compatible with a light weight coat because right? a coat cannot be lightweight and heavy at the same time. So that rules out the weight reading and leaves us with the color. Another way to do it is with ellipsis, which is really useful. So if I say, I wore a light coat and so did Bill, um, then whichever one of these I have, for me, Bill also had to wear that coat. So if I wore a light-colored heavy coat and he wore a dark-colored lightweight coat, then um, we end up uh, with a sentence that 
is not true. It's not true that I wore a light coat instead of Bill. Right? So when we're aligning things, they're going to have the same element of meaning. And this is something that we notice in ellipsis uh, throughout natural language. Now it's when we elide something, the semantic content has to be there. Exact, the exact semantic content has to be there. And that tells us that the color and the weight, you know, the color or the weight, these are part of the semantic meaning of this word. And so what we want to see then is, do we have one light, one morphine that's light in color, and then another one that's light in weight? Or do we have just a single morphine light that whose meaning can en encompass color or weight? Yeah. Now, another kind of ambiguity is structural ambiguity. If I say, I saw a man with a telescope, and it's the classic example, this can be ambiguous between uh, seeing a man who has a telescope or using a telescope to see a man who might not have anything in his hand. And so, in that sense, every lexical item in the sentence is exactly the same. Nothing has changed. But the composition is different. The structure is different. And through the proposition of compositionality, that means that the composition will be different too. And so, um, what this tells us then is that the semantics, the semantic interpretation of, of an expression depends on the syntactic information that feeds it. And so, we get these different kinds of uh, meanings. Now, there's another kind of ambiguity that comes, um, again, with arguments. Um, if you say, I threw a ball, right? The word ball is ambiguous right? between the little round object and a dance. But, depending on which one you have, it will affect the meaning of the verb throw. So now, the verb throw is also ambiguous depending on its arguments. So there are a lot of different kinds of ambiguities, and some of them depend on the syntax in a lot of ways. And some of them uh, are really lexical in nature. Um, and in that sense, we get uh, different kinds of ambiguity. There are other kinds of ambiguity as well. There's difference between literal meanings and metaphorical meanings. A good example of this is the word foot. So the word foot has multiple literal meanings, right? Um, so there is the sense where it is the body part, the thing at the bottom of your body there. And there's also the unit of measurement. The, a foot, right? 12 inches. There's also, though, Based on the meaning of the body part, there is the literal meaning, the actual foot, but there are also metaphorical meanings, right? So if I say the foot of a mountain or the foot of a table, right? these are different meanings of the word foot, but they're kind of metaphorical extensions. Right? They're, um, you can imagine, you're imagining the table or the mountain as a body, and then the foot is part of that. Um, and then for measurement, you have the measurement that is of distance. And then there's also the metrical measurement, right? A uh, metrical foot, like you see in poetry or phonology. So a lot of different meanings, and these all mean different things. And when we say they mean different things, of course, they have different truth conditions. So this is how we can, um, but using these different uh, contexts, using... Um, contradictory statements, like, but it was heavy, using ellipsis, we can uh, develop ways of testing for ambiguities. And we have to be careful to determine the cause of the ambiguity. Do we have different lexical items, right, that might even have different etymologies? Uh, a lexical item that can be interpreted in different ways, depending on the context structural ambiguities, or a mix of structural and lexical ambiguities. Right? A lot of different ways of uh, piecing apart these meanings. 
But as semanticists, it's one of the tasks that we have to do. But now we have some tools, and we can go and do that.